Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I am Brad, here with Doug. Hi. Doug spent some time at PAX East this past weekend. Yep. And the first thing I think you said you did, and this came from, I think, your experience last year, because this was yeah. like your favorite spot last year, is you ran your way over to the Annapurna Interactive booth to check out their stuff. I did actually like it was it was like not a joke like I really like my first thing my first thing I want to do is was go to the was go to the Annapurna booth this year like I like ran past Soul Calibur six and Detroit <laughs> and, <never. laughs> and uh, I actually went back the second day as well to do to the Annapurna booth again so I could play some of the other games yeah um, and I guess yeah. for those unfamiliar with them this is uh they ended up doing what remains of the Finch didn't they. Yeah, they're sort of like they're kind of like an indie publisher. Mm -hmm. They they are literally are they used to be part of the branch of Sony that like published Journey and Flower and other cool indie games and like like um what's the one you throw paint around? Uh unfinished one. Unfinished one. Yeah, so it's like literally that branch of Sony that was publishing those games and they Sony I guess sort of like ended that and they kind of split off and did their own thing with yep. uh Anna, Annapurna Pictures. Yep. But basically it's super super high quality indie games that yep. are just incredible. So you had a list of a couple here that you tried. Um, yes. I guess the the easy one to start with is Donut uh, County, Country Donut, Donut County, Donut County. county. I can never remember if it's yeah. county or country. Uh, Donut County, which uh, for those not familiar, is kind of a Katamari esque game uh, where you're a big giant hole. So I yeah. guess did you play something new this year, or is it kind of the same thing? Because that game's been around for a while now. Yeah, it was actually really funny. the The demo. Um the gameplay sections of the demo were essentially, I think, literally exactly the same as the ones I played last time. But the little, like, character talkings in between were completely different. Huh. Um, well, not completely different, but they were definitely changed. It definitely felt like, um, so I guess, Donut. what is Donut County? Donut County is a game where you play as a hole, which I found out this time is a donut hole. <laughs> 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 like a donut falls, and then it makes a hole. I was like, oh, it's a donut hole. That's funny. And you play a sentient hole that sits there and just kind of gobbles up the scenery. It's kind of like you have like a little diorama, and as you eat things, your hole gets bigger, and then you end up gobbling up everything. It's very like very similar to Katamari. And then, um, and then this time though, the uh, the the character interactions are basically you are the antagonist in the story because you're the thing that ate up this entire town, and um, everybody's sort of blaming it on this raccoon who is kind of an asshole. Yeah, um, who's in who's in like every trailer? They always keep having this raccoon show up. Yeah, and it's really funny because all the other characters like anthropomorphic animals, like mm -hmm. people animals, and he's just a raccoon and he's just a dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, it's really funny and like it, it's clearly like whatever happened, like he had wrought this upon the town. I think it was it was interesting is like they had rewritten a lot of the scenes so that now, now they're just funnier. Nice. Um, it just felt more clever. It just felt um, it felt like it had more of a voice. I think last time it was like, oh, this is kind of wacky characters doing wacky things, but this time it felt like characters had cle had more defined personalities mm -hmm. than they did last time and it was just funnier like it was just i was like laughing out loud as i was playing i think last time when i played the first time just the joy of the gameplay was there and this time it's like the joy of the gameplay plus these interesting characters one of who's kind of an asshole and it's very funny nice. um, <laughs> um and that's i guess that's all i have to say about Dota county i think last time it was just very surprising playing that game i think this time is just because it was the same gameplay demo still very excited for it still getting a day one um but i guess that's all i really have to say about it yeah just some yeah just those minor tweaks and things like that. Yeah, exactly. It's actually, I think the interesting thing was just seeing a demo like I played last year, playing it again with all these different tweaks and stuff. Because it's interesting seeing like a, a game go from alpha to beta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is something <laughs> um, that we, as the not famous people, get to never get to see very yeah. often. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you get to see the cooks in the kitchen sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so the other two games that it looks like you played, I've never really even heard of before, which is always interesting. Um, and yeah. I don't know if you had beforehand either. Uh, one of them is Outer Lands, which I know literally nothing about. This one is interesting because they had a long line. And I was like, why does this game have a long line? I had never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And actually, as I was playing the Donut County game, uh, um, my, my actually, my girlfriend was playing it this time. I was actually just kind of watching her play it this time. And I was like, and I turned around. I was like, why does this game have such a, I literally said out loud, like, why does this game have such a long line? I've never heard of it. And then like the guy who made it was like standing there. I was like, oh, uh, he's like, oh, you've never heard of this game. I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Outer Lands, I think I, I didn't, I actually did not end up getting to play this one. I did oh, watch okay. somebody play it. I did watch somebody play the demo all the way through. And I talked with the, this is what happened with Edith Fins last year. Like I play, I watched, talked to the developer for like 20 minutes and didn't actually play his game. Um, <laughs> Because I because as he was describing it, I was like I was and watching people play, I was like, I actually don't need to play this, I'm going to buy this. 
um, which is like one of the few games where at the, at the, I think at PAX, there's games I saw. I was like, I need to play that first before I'm going to see if I like it. Oh, now I like it sort of yeah. thing. And this one, just as watching people play and the guy describing it, it's like, oh, this game is awesome. Um, so what so is what, it? <laughs> yeah, so what is Outerlands? Um, Outerlands is a giant exploration puzzle game. So I'm out. That I know. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what it is, it is a game that is set inside a handcrafted solar system. And you are, yep. Uh, no proce- I, asked, I asked, is it procedurally generated? And they're like, no. I was like, great. <laughs> Good. Okay. More back in. <laughs> uh, yeah. And you play as a sort of archaeologist character um, who has a spaceship and you can hop around between the different planets. Um, so the interesting aspect of this game is like, okay, we've seen like No Man's Sky and stuff. Yeah. Is that the game is basically on a 20 minute cycle. And within that 20 minute cycle, like these, these planets are all sort of orbiting around each other and each planet, something is going on for that 20 minutes straight. Like that is not like a re- repeating thing. So it's like for that entire 20 minutes, this, this planet is morphing and warping and shifting and whatever else. And once that 20 minutes is over, the planets reset and you end up back where you started. Um, and from what the guy just kind of sort of explained to me is like each of these little planets is basically has its own sort of puzzle system in place. And as you figure out how each planet works and kind of like at what time you need to be where, it's sort of like how this like greater mystery all sort of forms together. So like, for example, one planet was this, it was a water planet. These are all very small, by the way, like think of like Mario galaxy sized planets. Okay. Um, so this one was this, it was a planet that was filled with water that had tornadoes on it. And so like, there's like these gigantic tornadoes, like all sort of like going around the spherical planet. And, um, if you for, sort of like whatever you secret, you figure out like to, um, to like, why are those tornadoes working that way? Then that kind of answers the puzzle for like another, for like another planet. Oh, okay. So the, the so I guess ultimately your goal is to get through this entire galaxy in 20 minutes or solar system in 20 minutes. Yeah. Or figure out what's going on within the 20 minutes. So on your last thing, you can beat the game like in two minutes. So like it's oh, okay. all these different, yeah. So it's like all these different puzzle pieces. So you can spend 20 minutes, so you can spend your entire 20 minutes on one planet. See, go, see it go through its entire cycle and then reset, start another planet for a whole 20 minutes. See that, or maybe you need to be on this planet for five minutes, then go over and you know, cause on minute seven at this planet, this is going to go on. And because I did this thing at this planet, this planet's going to be doing so this the, thing. So again, like you said, I guess I, I wasn't thinking, but not yeah. only, so the events all occur in the same order. There's the same frequency. Yeah. There's the same thing. It's not like, this will randomly happen on this planet at some point. So you can time it out and go planet one, two minutes, 27 seconds, tornado hits, spins around. I need to run through the tornado. Then after I leave the tornado, go to planet two. Yeah, yeah exactly. Three minutes exactly. and 15. Okay. That's okay. That's kind of cool. So essentially the goal of the game is just understanding what's going on in the game. Yeah. To ultimately be able to run through the game. Essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Essentially it's just like a speed run basically, as you figure out the parts of the planets to be able to get that so you can actually get through them. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's like, it's, and you're kind of like, and the, I, don't, I wasn't quite sure. I was like, so do the plants are, and it's like, from what I understand, the plants sort of interact in different ways too. And because they're all rotating around each other, I'm sure there's certain points in like the line, the planets will like align. So you mm-hmm. need to be on that planet or that planet to make sure you're at the right alignment so you can push the button to do the thing and do all that. Huh. Um, and it was really funny. He's like, yeah, he's like, and I was like, so once you know everything, like, does it only take like two minutes to beat the game? He's like, well, kind of. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. Like that is, so like, once you understand, like, it's like, if I sped, if I knew exactly what to do, you could beat the game in like 30 seconds. Yeah. Or it's like, like uh, what is that? Gone home where there's that trophy for like beating the game in under 15 seconds or whatever, because you, I know where, yeah, exactly. I know where this is. I know I need to go there. Done. But yeah, that exploration like, from, of the house is the entertaining part. Yeah, exactly. And from what I understand too, he's, I was like, okay, so it's nothing permanent. He's like, well, the one thing that is permanent is the information that you got from each planet is sort of kept on like a computer in your ship. So you can kind of understand like what's going on. So you like have notes, basically notes. Section oh, each planet, like your codex or on. whatever stays or your codex or your index or journal, whatever that all stays together the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I was like, cause I was at, cause like my next thing is like, oh, do I actually need to pull out a pen and paper? I was like, oh no, 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 don't worry. You got all the, you got all your notes and stuff that are taken on that thing. I was like, this game just sounds awesome. It had a huge line and like everybody seemed very excited to play it. Very cool. Um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Uh, and then the last one I think you got here is what Tom, what Tom, I, I'm just going to say what Tom, we're going to call it that actually, and somebody can correct us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so buckle it. Cause what Tom is a weird game. It's a weird game to explain. It's a weird game to play. It's a weird everything. All right. Um, so what Tom is by the creator of the Katamari games, 
but he's also it's mostly by the career of Nobi Nobi. Um, okay, okay, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same guy. Um, so, okay, I actually played this demo with my dad, and my dad was very confused the entire time playing it. And uh, so it's a it's a very fun and slightly frustrating game because it because the logic of the game is so back ass words. So you play a very depressed mayor who is a green cube. I'm just going to describe what happened during my playthrough. You're a depressed mayor, and all he wants to do is make friends. So you go around, and as you make friends with things, they become they they come to life. So, like the first character you make friends with is a pebble, and then once you make friends with the pebble, you can play as the pebble and then make friends with the boulder. And once you make friends with the boulder, you make friends with flowers, and then. The only way the flowers can become your friends is because the mayor is so depressed. He's crying all the time. So his tears water the flowers. grow the water the flowers. And now you have like little flower people running around. So you have like little flower and rock people and a little mayor guy who also has a special ability. Oh, God. I <laughs> he has a special ability that he has a bomb in his hat that is a that is shaped like a birthday present. And you can explode at any time. And one of the things you have to do to make friends is make them explode because that's what everybody wants in this town. They want to explode. It's a very exciting thing for them. And as they explode, like bright colors go everywhere and every character starts like laughing and cheering as they're exploding in the air. Okay. Okay. Um, so your goal is to make friends and then explode them. Yes. And um, just, just for the context, like the controls in this game, you have your square and circle buttons, which you have like four buttons. What, triangle is like your action button, square and circle, and then X is to jump. Square and circle is to control your hands so you can hold hands with people. Okay. Um, so like your square is to hold with your left hand, and then circle is to hold with your right hand. So you can go around like hold hands with characters, and you guys like dance as you're holding hands, or like you make circles of friends and spin around in, in uh, circles. Um, and basically what happens is as you're making more and more friends... One of the things that happens is like there's a part where I made a giant tree and the giant tree ate people. And when he ate people, they turned into fruit. And because I had a lot of fruit and vegetable people thought like uh, around, this attracted a giant table from another dimension. Okay. So, and the giant table comes and it says like introduce is like the table has returned in like big bold letters. And uh, then the table comes flying in. He's got like a fork and a knife and a toilet. And then the toilet starts like it, the game's so fucking weird man and my dad was having a really <laughs> hard time like playing it and then the guy next to us like it was it was very fun and weird and silly and the guy next to us we just thought he was a guy who was like like helping demo the game like a pr person he's like oh he's the producer on the game <laughs> <laughs> um basically it's a, it's like a very very weird playground that has like very weird rules that keep swapping and and like um flipping around like and there's kind of like a weird mission structure like the one was to turn everybody into fruit because that cuts the next thing. And then once I got everybody turned to fruit, a giant mouth came and ate them and turned them into poop. And then once I had the poop, the poop, you had to flush the poop and then it turned into golden poop. And then the golden poop attracted like another character. It kind of felt a lot like um, birthdays where like you have like these sort weird sort of rules that are all kind of like interacting. And like there's and, like you feel like you're kind of in control of this rule set. Like, OK, I kind of understand what my mission is. But as you get more and more friends, the sort of systems start getting kind of out of your hand is weird and more more and more crazy and crazy things start happening. Um, it's a very cool game. It was just very, very strange. Um, hmm. I don't know how else to describe it, like besides like all these like. But I, I will say at the very end, I was having fun. It feels like sort of like a playground game, kind of like Noby Noby Boy. Um, did you play that by any chance? I'm going to be a hundred percent honest about five minutes. I went, huh? And then so if you played, <laughs> it, it feels like, it feels like a playground with, with structure. Like there are clear rules that are like, is there, going is there a clear like, objective? Like, is there something you're trying to do or is it just kind of, you're messing around until something happens or is it like no, very like, clear? Like, like you need to eat the fruit people. Yeah. Like, well, usually there's like a character who's like over their head to be like, if they want an explosion, there'll be like an explosion over the head. Like they're yelling explosion or something oh, okay. like that. Or if there's a character, like one of the ones I had to stack a bunch of people and like they're, they're like speaking, you can see a diagram of like stacked people. Gotcha. Or, okay. Or there's like a toilet and it's like moving around. It's hungry for poop. <laughs> but it, it, I know it sounds very stupid, but it's very, very fun and silly. And like, I feel like as I'm explaining this thing, I'm hoping that we get a video of this game, like running in the background. So you sort of understand. <laughs> but it definitely feels like more like a playful art experiment yeah. than like a traditional game. But unlike Nobi Nobi Boy, which I also agree was kind of like, 
it was it was fine, but there just didn't feel like there was any there was like real structure. Yeah, to it. I this didn't feel like I was like, doing anything. Yeah, in this one, it feels like okay, there's clearly goals, and as I'm completing these goals, there's more and more happening. Okay. Um. Yeah. So it's actually it's actually a lot of fun. It's very silly, very fun. And then I got my wallet signed by the guy who <laughs> made Katamari Damacy, and that was the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> and Doug's life was complete. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was very shaky. I didn't realize he was. I didn't realize he was going to be there. And then, like, I just noticed. I was like, "Oh shit, he's like right there, and there's no line." And <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to you. <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a very 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 cool experience. I, I really like the Annapurna stuff. Like, and then they also had like uh, Florence was also there. They had a Switch ver- version of Florence or something, and they also are now doing these. I think a Switch version and PS4 version of Kentucky Route Zero. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Always good stuff. I feel like everything I've played from them is always ends up being something I really enjoy. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, that'll do it for this. Uh, we are Workforce Gaming. You can follow us on Twitter at Workforce Gaming. Subscribe to us on YouTube or wherever else you're listening. And we will see you later. Bye.